In this Dragon's Dogma 2 video, I want to talk a bit about something I mentioned at the end of my Dragon's Dogma 2 review, which is that Dragon's Dogma 2 could have been Game of the Year, but probably won't be. And I want to go into that in this video. I have played almost 250 hours of the game now, so let's get into it. Let me just start by saying that I've absolutely enjoyed my time with Dragon's Dogma 2. It's easily the best game I've played this year, and it's the best game I've played in quite some time. There are a lot of great games last year. I don't think this game beats Baldur's Gate 3 or anything like that. But it is a fantastic game, but it has a lot of flaws at the same time. Some of them are easy to overlook, and others can be quite disappointing. For instance, Dragon's Dogma 2 is one of those games that just gets better and better the more you play. The more hours you sink into this game, the more you start to realize the complex mechanisms and the obscure mechanics and how they impact the game. And it can take you quite some time before the game clicks for you. But once it does, it's caught that, like, that Dark Souls moment where you're like, oh, this is how the game plays, and you absolutely fall in love with it. But on the opposite side of that coin is the fact that when you first start playing Dragon's Dogma 2, it's not that fun. There is a lot of running back and forth to quests because you don't understand that exploration plays a huge factor in the game. There is a lot of weight management and inventory management and the enemy variety at the beginning of the game and you know throughout the game, but particularly at the beginning of the game is abysmal because you don't run into a lot of big monsters regularly until you get higher level and reach later places of the game. So this is kind of a double-edged sword. Even though the game gets better and better the more you play, the beginning can turn a lot of people off, and if they don't stick around to the point the game clicks, then they're not going to enjoy this game that much. And another hot topic in this game is fast travel, and in my opinion, playing through the game, fast travel becomes less and less of an issue the further you get into the game. Once you have enough gold that you can buy fairy stones regularly, once you've accumulated some, and once you have port crystals set around the map, fast travel is really a non-issue for the vast majority of your playthrough. However, at the beginning of the game, it tends to be a very sore point for some people because you can't really fast travel hardly at all, and even when you can fast travel, you have very limited items in the fairy stones early on, so you're kind of not likely to use the fast travel mechanics as much as you could, and this results in running back and forth and back and forth, and a lot of people don't enjoy that. So again, this is one of those issues that is not a problem further into the game, but is a problem early on and can detract new players from really enjoy their experience with Dragon's Dogma 2. I'm moving along to exploration. In my opinion, the exploration of Dragon's Dogma 2 is phenomenal from a pure exploration point of view. There is so much hidden everywhere. Like, there are just things hidden all over the map, hidden high, hidden low. And sometimes you walk right by things and don't see them because it's dark or you're just not at the right angle. And frankly, Dragon's Dogma 2 has some of the best exploration from a should I check around this corner to see if there's anything? Should I go up this ladder to see if there's anything? Should I fly up onto this pillar in the middle of nowhere to see if there's a chest up there? Because 95% of the time, you will find something when you explore. But on the other side of that, critics of exploration of this game are finding that there is not as much loot to find when you explore. There is stuff to get. There's a lot of consumables and gold and things like that. And gold is actually quite good later on in the game because you can buy some of the best gear with gold. So that's not a problem for me. But a lot of people are making the argument that there's not a lot of loot to find in terms of like weapons, armor, rings, etc. There just isn't enough for how much exploration there is. And it's hard to argue that point, in my opinion, particularly when you're playing a vocation in the game. And when you find like a staff, if you're playing a thief, it doesn't really improve the progression of your character. Or if you find a shield and you're playing a sorcerer, that doesn't really improve the progression of your character. So even though you're finding some of these things at a regular rate, most of the time, they're not going to apply to the vocation that you're playing, which can make exploration not as rewarding as it could be. And this kind of ties into my next point, which is while I love that there are weapons that have unique features, like daggers that, you know, tell you where there are chests and staffs that can silence enemies and things like this, there is a shocking lack of this in the game compared to what there could be. And even though there is a good foundation there, there just really isn't quite enough of this stuff in the game. And from my experience, I have not noticed any armor to have any special effects, despite the flavor text. I don't see any actual special effects. I have not seen anyone go by and say, oh, this, this item actually improves my blah, without somebody else saying, no, it doesn't. So there are you know very few weapons that have special effects in the game. And to my own knowledge, almost no armor or zero armor. 
So that feels like a missed opportunity because it's one of the things people really love about Dragon's Dogma 2 when they have these kind of obscure mechanics attached to these things that they're, you know, discovering as they play through the game. But there just aren't that many and there could be a lot more given how much time was had to develop this game. And obviously you're going to use those weapons in combat and I really enjoy the combat of Dragon's Dogma 2. It is fun, it's not particularly challenging for the most part, but it's fun. It has a good backbone of mechanics for combat and I just really generally enjoy the combat in Dragon's Dogma 2. I like that the stamina system kind of ties exploration and combat together by, you know, making you create a character that really has to manage their stamina well and their equipment way outside of combat so they can perform well inside of combat. I really like that. Dragon's Dogma 2 doesn't have the most innovative combat I have ever played in any game, but I like how they've done it here. However, on the flip side of that, just like every other point I've mentioned so far, there is a negative, and that's that the combat of the game suffers because the enemy variety of the game is poor. Most of the enemies in Dragon's Dogma 2 were in Dragon's Dogma 1. I think it's about 90%, 85%, something like that. There are very few new enemies, and the variety of the enemies generally is poor in the vast majority of the game. You're going to be fighting goblins and bandits and lizards and wolves most of the time throughout your playthrough, and even though there are variations of these that can make the game a little more refreshing, for the most part, it feels very, very repetitive when you're fighting those enemies over and over, especially once you're like two hours into a playthrough, you really notice this and you're kind of going like, why aren't there more enemy types in this? You know, you had time to improve this from the previous one and yet you basically have the same enemies and it's kind of a sore point. It's like, this is great, but why? But why not add more to it so that players can enjoy new strategies and fight new enemies and discover them? It still boggles my mind why there weren't more enemies in this game. And another thing that I really love about Dragon's Dogma 2 that kind of sets it apart from other games is the way that NPCs feel very much alive in the game. They have their own schedules. A lot of times they're moving around like traveling merchants or specific, you know, important NPCs. The game will be moving around the game world and you have to find them and figure out what they're doing and, you know, win their favor in order to get specific items from them. And it just kind of makes you feel like you're part of a living, breathing world rather than these people that are just constantly in the same place that are there for you, you feel more like you're part of their world rather than they're part of yours. However, on the negative side of this, there is a lot of complexity and confusion involved in this because it seems like, you know, NPCs are moving all the time and you don't know where they go and you don't know how to get them back. And sometimes you know what you need to do, but you can't find the NPC. And that can cause some frustration at the same time. I would say I generally enjoy the NPC system more than I dislike it. But there have been times where I've been very frustrated where I'm like, how do I get this NPC back here? I knew that he was here yesterday and now I don't know where he went and I'm trying, looked all over the map. And that's compounded a little bit by the way the fast travel system works in this game, particularly early on when you don't fast travel very easily. You can run all over the map looking for an NPC and that can be quite frustrating. And another thing that I really enjoy that's kind of a tangent of the NPCs is the quest lines in Dragon's Dogma 2. These are not the most complex quests you've ever seen in an RPG, and they're not the most interesting quests I've ever done. However, the fact that many of them are intertwined and the outcomes of them are tied to other quests in the game is really refreshing. I really love how by making a decision or doing something in one quest, you might screw up another quest. And it really makes your decisions important and taking the time to really listen to what's going on. And you're almost guaranteed to mess up something the first time that you play. And if you're a perfectionist, that can be a little bit frustrating for you. You know, you're maybe somebody who wants to get every quest outcome perfect. It's very difficult to do in this game without using the wiki or saving at your in regularly so that you can reload if you mess something up. But I really, really like that more than I don't. But still, there is some frustration in there for people who, you know, want to get all these quest lines right. So obviously these are the things about the game that I love will simultaneously have frustration elements to them or are just kind of disappointing like enemy variety and weapon and armor variety could have been higher, etc. This isn't to say anything to touch upon the performance of the game, which is obviously less than stellar or the microtransactions that people were ranting and raving about how terrible they were. I myself have personally never felt the need to buy any of them, but those are also factors in whether this game could win game of the year or not. And I think the reality is when you 
tie up and add together all of these missed opportunities for Dragon's Dogma 2, the things that they did well but not quite as well as they could have, I just don't see this game winning Game of the Year. However, what's really interesting about Dragon's Dogma 2 to me is that when I look at the other games coming out this year, there aren't too many games that are going to compete for it, in my opinion. There just aren't that many coming out this year that you're really going to sit down and say, oh, I think this game could win Game of the Year. You know, internally, we've been having discussion. Obviously, Elden Ring DLC is coming out in June, but if you look at Elden Ring DLC as an expansion rather than a brand new game, which it's, you know, not a brand new game because you have to have the base game to play it, you set that aside for a second, like, what is really going to take on this game for Game of the Year? And it's hard to come up with a great answer to that. There are some great games coming out this year, but I'm just like, are they really going to win Game of the Year? For instance, is Black Myth going to be that good that it wins Game of the Year? It's hard to say at this point, but my gut is saying it's not likely. Like, if you're a gambling person, you're not going to bet that it's going to win Game of the Year. And there are other games that are phenomenal, like Helldivers 2 is a fantastic game. Is it going to win Game of the Year? I don't know. Power World, fantastic game by a lot of people have been talking about it. I've never played it personally, but I hear everyone has a lot of good things to say about it. Is it going to win Game of the Year? I don't know. If you look at the games that Dragon's Dogma is going to be compared to, even with all of its flaws, I feel like it's still at least in the conversation, even if it doesn't deserve to win. So that kind of wraps up my thoughts on Dragon's Dogma 2. I really love Dragon's Dogma 2, but I feel like it could have been one of the most special games ever made, and they just missed out on it by not doing certain things. I feel like they got all the difficult part rights of the game, but then kind of fumbled on the simple parts like enemy variety, more weapons and armor, performance, stuff like that, where other games tend to focus on those and they can't get the complicated thing, the, the X factor feeling of the game right, where Dragon's Dogma absolutely nails that. What do you guys think? Am I crazy here? Let me know in the comments below.